Merry Christmas and welcome to the Oak and Rock Fatherhood Holiday Christmas Special. Anthony, Merry Christmas, brother. Welcome to the show. What's going on, man? We're talking fatherhood. We're talking family. We're talking the last Christmas. Sounds a little ominous, but it is anything but. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you like and subscribe. And on this most festive of celebrations that we have, we're going to talk a little bit about family, fatherhood, the Christmas season, what we're doing, a little bit about the new year. And most importantly, how you can help yourself make this the last Christmas. But we're going to find out what we mean by that in a little bit. Before we do that, (laughs) Anthony, how are you doing, man? (laughs) I'm doing excellent, brother. Merry Christmas. And 2021 is almost over. The year has been challenging, but good in the same same regard. Challenging is a word. (laughs) It has been a year. For the two of us, it has been a significant one. But we're going to save that for New Year's. So if you want to hear the breakdown of our entire year, check out our New Year's episode. That'll be obviously jobs on January 1st. But with that, we're talking Christmas. We're talking happiness, connection. But the title, The Last Christmas, like I said, that comes with a, what the hell are you talking about? Are you going to die? You know, is this the last one? You're never going to be the same again. You're not coming back. It's actually anything but. This is the last Christmas you're going to allow yourself to be at this standard. This is the last Christmas you're going to allow your family members to be at that standard. This is the last Christmas you accept anything but your personal best throughout an entire year. You know, Christmas comes so close to the new year and it's such a a tight come together time that oftentimes you forget in that moment all you did to get to that point. And for many, they look along like, I wish I had done more. I wish I had tried harder. And their Christmas, they start feeling bad because Christmas, again, represents we're almost done with this year. If you had set a goal to achieve something and you haven't done it by Christmas, the odds are you're not going to reach it. You've got, what, six days, five days? I mean, it's, it's likely not going to happen. So now you're sitting here looking back saying, what did I do? And while, I mean, Anthony and I were just laughing. Our year has been quite busy. We've had a lot going on. I can look back. Look, I can't remember how much I've done. That's how much I've done and how much I've grown, how much I've learned. Some highs, some lows, some very bright moments, some incredibly dark moments. Yet I'm here and I'm standing tall with my family. We're having a great time. And the same thing with you, Anthony. You know, I see you, the family, everybody growing. But for those men who are stuck in that little, I wish I had done more moment, how are we going to get this to be their last Christmas of doing shit like that? <laughs> a uh, a big challenge, right? Um, the last Christmas. This is definitely something where we, we want to, um, you know, we want to create an environment where we're succeeding, we're flourishing, we're thriving, uh, but not just us as men. This has to be, you know, passed down to our kids. And, you know, like you, man, it, it's it was a tough year. Um, there's a lot of things I had to overcome, a lot of things that um, really tested me. And to, to specifically stick to parenting, stick to fatherhood, um, you know, Christmas should be really a time of, uh, of joy and happiness of, of giving, you know, we, we talk a lot about, um, especially if you have kids, right. It's, it's usually centered about around what am I getting, right. They want gifts, they want things. And, you know, to me, it's, it's always, it's always been a time where there's lessons we can teach our kids, right. About being a good person, about being a good man, about when you're capable and you're able to help people, you have to actually go out and do that. Right, whether it's donating toys or donating clothes to a family in the neighborhood that needs your help, um, and I, I think these things that if, if we're going to be willing to put in the time and, and show our kids that we want to do good deeds and we want to help other people, that really the, the center and the focus of our attention really needs to be on the whole year how we treat our kids. Right, what does it matter if we're doing these great deeds on Christmas? When the whole year we've been screaming, we've been yelling, we've been punishing, we've been really treating our kids like shit. But now all of a sudden we throw up some Christmas lights and we we think that uh, things are changed, right? We think that it's going to magically get better and we're going to be connected at a holiday dinner that there's probably a lot of resentment, a lot of anger and a lot of frustration within the family. So we want to eliminate that, obviously, right? We don't want this to, to be forwarded to 2022. Um, a lot of the tips, a lot of the tricks, we've had a video on that about peaceful parenting. We want fathers to start implementing these tactics, these tricks 
so they can start enjoying the time with their kids so they can really be focused and and have some clarity on what it means to have a healthy family to have good attachment and when you sit down at the dinner table to carve the turkey on christmas um you're you're filled with joy right you're filled with this this feeling that man we really worked hard this year we really achieved something look at the smiles look how everybody loves being together and spending time together and for me that's what you know th those are things i think about on christmas and that's part of the goals that i set every year and again the last christmas let this be the last one that you rob yourself of that joy you know you're sitting down you're, you're cutting the turkey or whatever you're sitting down you're bringing everyone together the family's visiting let this be the last one where you're sitting there and you're, you keep adjusting your sweater because you didn't stick to that that workout routine and you're sitting there and you're like man i, I don't have the body you're ashamed and you see it all the time you know people come over that i'm obviously a paying attention to everything in my life i'm highly attuned to body language and just the tone of people's voices is what i do and you see the guy who's they sit down and they have to adjust to get rid of the man boobs or everything it's like man what if this was the year that you dedicated to fitness and you could just sit and enjoy the company and you're not so worried and so lost in your head you know because that prevents you from reaching out and connecting you're so worried about how do i look um am, am i am i out of shape you know or my role is showing whatever that you don't you don't hear what's being said to you and you don't want to reach out and be like hey you know how are you guys doing i haven't seen you in forever what's going on what's new you know, you're so lost up here that you're not out in the world experiencing the moment. You're robbing yourself of the happiness. You know, let this be the last Christmas where you drink too much and you're going crazy and you're ruining it. And, you know, we say that and it's one of those like cliche, you know, New Year's Christmas, people getting crazy. But it's it's not really a stereotype. It's real. For some people, every holiday, Halloween, New Year's, Christmas, whatever, they're the ones causing a big scene because they're partying, they're falling into the trees, they're doing these crazy things. You know, everybody has that person in the family. Let this be the last Christmas that that's you. Let it be the last one that you allow yourself to overindulge in anything because you're content with who you are. You don't need anything added to your life to make you happier. Being there, being present, being with those around you is your bliss. This could be the last Christmas that you have any regrets if you give yourself that type of permission. And again, there's, there's several ways you can do it. You know, but it starts with you. It starts with your mindset. It starts with coming together, making the choice. And it starts before Christmas. So I can't help you this one. Anthony can't help you with 2021 Christmas. Dude, I'm surprised I made it to 2021 Christmas. I'm just happy to fucking be here. Dude, it's it's the 23rd. We're almost done with this year. And today I got some more shitty news. <laughs> so I'm just like, what the hell's going on? You know, and it's just, it's the year. And you know what? I'm smiling. I'm happy. I'm going to get through it because what's the alternative? I stop. That's not happening. You know, I quit. That's equally not happening. That's the only way. The only way I stop is when I die. And I'm still here. My heart's still beating. That means I still have an opportunity to go out, live my life, pursue my mission, love my family. And so I'm going to do exactly that. And that is the gift that we would like to give to you this Christmas is finding peace in the home, finding peace within yourself. Yeah. I mean, what's the other option? Right. You, you wallow in self-pity and reflect back on all the things that you did wrong and where you failed and how bad your kids are behaving and how much you hate your wife and your dogs suck right i mean <laughs> that's the alternative um this is life man and, and you know moving forward looking looking to the future of next year's christmas um you know you have to start setting a stage yeah and like you said zach you have to it, it starts with us right we're <clears throat> we're the 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 men the father, we're, we're leading the home. And I can guarantee you <clears throat> that as you get things dialed in, as you start getting physically uh, in better shape, as you start getting some mental clarity and you start learning about things that are going to help you uh, deal with stressful times, right? You you get some self-control, you you learn how to self-regulate, you your your self-worth increases. So when you're when you're during these holidays, especially Christmas, when you're sitting there, you can enjoy it, right? You can see the fruits of your labor. You can see your kids aren't anxious, right? They're not worried about what toy they're not going to be getting. And your wife's not worried about, um, you know, who she has to cook for and who's going to help clean up. Because these are all things that you've been working on all year, right? And well, we're going to start to have you work on next year. And it, it's all about cooperation. It's all about bringing the family together. Um, and it, it's really what it what it's going to be about is 
you are in charge of creating the environment. So if your home is chaotic, if things are a mess and everybody, you know, flips their lid very quick and, and they're reactive, there's things that you need to fix within you, right? You need to start being calm. You need to start being the rock and you need to start showing your, your family that, hey, it's okay, right? Things are going to go wrong. The dog's going to get into the stuffing. It's not the end of the world, right? We'll, we'll make a new dish. We'll work together. But, and, and that's just a little problem. But there are so many small problems that build up and escalate over time. And we talk about this often, right, um, with getting the shoes on and getting ready for school. And we, we constantly have these same arguments and same fights. And instead of solving the problem, what we do is we demand they get fixed because we don't want to do the work, right? We don't want to look at our kid and say, hey, maybe there's a, a different way around this. I can navigate this better. And I can actually, instead of yelling at my, my son, I can show him how to tie his shoes. And I don't care if that's going to take 20 times this week. We're going to get into reps and we're going to learn how to do it. And you know what? If it doesn't work, we're, we're getting a Velcros. So that's problem solved regardless. Uh, but, but this is the mindset that you have to carry into being a good leader, right? When things get tough, we can't resort to uh, inferior ways on solving the problem. We can't scream. We can't yell. And this stuff shows up, man, especially when everybody gets together during the holidays. Uh, this year, we are, we're in South Carolina. We're, we migrated. We, we escaped New York. And this is going to be our first Christmas here. Uh, Christmas Day, it's just going to be us, right? It's going to be my wife and my three kids, our four dogs, two cats, and 10 chickens. That's it, man. We don't need anybody else. We're going to sit. We're going to enjoy it. It's going to be 70 degrees. We're going to sit on the back porch. And we're going to wait for maybe some dolphins to come through the river. And all of that happens not because, um, not because we, we allowed life to consume us, but because we work to goals to put ourselves here. And all that started with me, right? The, the moment that I decided to take ownership of everything and say, hey, I am going to create and I'm going to build something great for my family. And what that does, it shows my kids that they're capable of doing it. And then one more thing, the reason I want to share it or I'm sharing this is because to let fathers know that you are 100 percent capable of doing the same. If I can do it, <laughs> there's a lot of other men who can do it 100 percent. You know, and that example is needed. You know, when men go through things, they're like, well, you don't get it. Well, you do get it. You shared your story the whole time. You know, you you we were rocking on the Family Alpha podcast years before you moved and did all this. So we saw that evolution. You've been public about it the entire time. And for you to, to sell the business, to move the family, to, to reestablish a new life and build things up there, it's just been incredible to see. And, any, and so if you can do that over these years, the gift you're giving yourself for anybody watching this or listening on this Christmas is to be in that those same shoes next year. Not that you have to move, buy a bunch of chickens and go down south. Though I literally did it minus the chickens. Like I also, I'm in North Carolina now from Rhode Island. So I kind of did the same thing, but a little different. But you can make your next Christmas one where you're sitting there and like, look at the things I did. I followed through. I stayed true. Even if you didn't move, even if nothing really changed physically, mentally, if you can change where you're at and the, the way you're looking at life, it's going to change the entire experience of the family. And dude, that's how you have the kids who are pumped up and the wife who's appreciative. You know, there are a lot of men who are going to be sitting there again, feeling uncomfortable in their clothes turning to numb the pain that they have, looking around at the presents they know they can't afford, but they had to go buy. Kids who don't appreciate all the money that was just blown, now they're going to be paying that off the entire year while they're trying to figure out if they're even going to have their job because of layoffs that are coming down the pipeline. There's so much going through men's heads that's preventable. You don't have to be in that position. You just keep finding yourself in the loop everybody else is in. So that's why this is the last Christmas you're going to spend in that loop. This is the last Christmas you're going to do that shit. You're going to make it better for next year. I can't fix what happened up to this point, but if you're listening to me now, I can help you fix it in the future. And Anthony and I are sharing our stories for you to see. We are men married with children, leading families, doing exactly what we're offering advice on how to do. This isn't theory. This is lived. Your experience will change. Your decision to, to look at even obstacles as opportunities will change your entire life spectrum because you're like, no, that's... Nobody's against me. Nobody's holding me down. These things happened. I've got to overcome them. Or if you made poor choices and you're sitting there Christmas day, like, holy shit, like we're 10 K. We put 10 grand on the credit card for them to have this. And we're sitting here and my wife, she's not happy because she's mad that her aunt showed up and she said she wasn't going to show up. And I'm sad because I'm fat. And then that guy, my kids over there, they're just angry. And then the dog fucking puked. 
So that's hor. And you just see like the what is it? Christmas vacation where like yeah. the cat gets electrocuted and everything goes wrong where the hap hap happiest fucking assholes on this side of the Mississippi or whatever he says. <laughs> and it's like, man, <laughs> Christmas doesn't have to be like that. The holidays don't have to be like that. No, and they don't. To in all honesty, right? It, it's these ideas that we formulate <clears throat> and we create this false reality that we think needs to happen. And you know, when when I say that I moved down and I live in South Carolina, you moved down North Carolina. This is nothing extravagant, right? We're not <laughs> we're not doing anything out of the ordinary or anything for you know that that signifies greatness. We're just taking control of our life, right? We're just setting things in motion and saying, hey, we're going to go build something better, right? We've we've come this far. We're going to put a plan in, in place and we're going to look to keep improving. And for me, that was getting out of New York. Um, you know, it, it was going to a, a smaller town, more isolated on a farm and just being away from the craziness. But I wouldn't have been able to, to do that and be, um, I, I guess, be content with what I did if I if I knew that my family was a mess, if things were in disorder, it wouldn't have worked, right? We would have came down here and everybody would have been unhappy. Everybody would have been blaming me for bringing them down here. And the exact opposite happened because I took, I took more than a decade of making sure that the way that my family um, functions and, and the values that we have were in line with how I was living. And my kids got to see that. So now that we come down here, you know, they, they understand um, to a degree, right? They're, they're still learning as I'm still learning. But we start to understand as a family what happiness means, what being good to each other means, right? Being kind to each other, speaking in a way that we're encouraging and we're promoting um, growth and, and success, right? And not just um, financially, but success, yeah, success with with how we we go about our day, success about how we we interact and how we um, speak to each other in family dinners, or how we how we solve problems together, right? And you know, I'm sure, like you, Zach, I have there, there's obstacles, there's problems every day in my home, but it doesn't ruin the vibe, right? It doesn't destroy the family environment, and it's cool when you when you put these steps in place and it, everything starts to process. So when hard times do happen or difficult things do come down the road, everybody's on board to find solutions, right? My kids are like, hey, how can we help? How do we fix this? Because when they had problems, that was my attitude, right? How can I help? How can I fix it? If I was the father who was saying, do as I say, shut the hell up. You're embarrassing me. I don't like your attitude. Go to your room. I would have raised kids who, when I was in trouble or when things weren't bad, they would be like, oh, dad fucked up, right? Dad's a mess. I can't listen to what he says because those seeds you know, already been planted. But the exact opposite shows up when you're willing to put in the work. And that goes to show, you know, you're giving that gift to your future self. The work you're doing now, the time you're investing in them now, that is a gift. That's your Christmas gift to the future you. Hey, 2022 Christmas, Anthony. Here you go, bud. 2021, Anthony, hooked you up. I put the reps in, you know, earlier in the year, do all those things. So when I wake up on Christmas day and I get to walk out and just sit in there and, and similar to you, this is our first Christmas in this home. We're and it's just us, you know, it's me, Jackie, the kids, we're going to come in and we're going to see the presents. We're going to open them up be happy as can be because we're together. It's not the amount of the presents under the tree. It's not, you know, the, the expectations as to what's to come around, you know, Christmas. And it's not the snacks or the sweets it's being together. And, you know, what's interesting is on Christmas, the kids will come up and they'll give me a gift and they'll sit in the, before they finish opening theirs, they'll want to see me open one of mine. Yes. They enjoy the gift. They enjoy seeing me happy the same way I see them happy. And yeah. it's, it's the sweetest thing. You know, my son will, he tries to pace it. So like, all right, we're all kind of together. He's watching them and even to his sister, you know, and I sit here, I've got their photos from school and I just, whenever I'm tired, I look at these photos whenever, you know, I feel like, oh man, this is hard. I look at the photos, you know, those little eyes, they motivate me to keep going. And then I put that time, I put those reps in with them. And then when I watch them do that with each other, and, you know, my son will help my daughter open a gift or she'll, she'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe you got that thing you wanted, you know, and she's genuinely happy for him. You have a family where everybody's just super kind to each other <laughs> and really nice. And you just have a good time. And that's not 
I feel for people who aren't experiencing that because it's such a pleasure. It is the point of family. It's just, it's such a joy to have and to live out. And it's, you know, while some are like, man, I, I wish I could have something else. You know, I, I, they daydream about these foreign lands and exotic women and bottles and cars. And I'm, I'm doing the opposite. I'm like pinching myself. Like, is this real? Like, I can't believe this is my life. Like where I came from to be living this, like how the hell did I get here? I'm so fortunate and blessed to have all the things I have. But then I look at my past. I'm like, yo, you put in a lot of work to give yourself this gift. This is my present. You know, the, the present day that we're living in is the present because of previous me doing the work. So let this be the last Christmas you stop putting in the work. Let this be the first Christmas you start putting in the work. You start giving yourself that gift for tomorrow. You know, when it's Christmas Day, we've hit about 20 minutes. So look, Anthony and I are just looking to say Merry Christmas and make this the last one that you spend with any sort of negative doubts or, or insecurities or any of that shit floating around your head. Just enjoy your Christmas today because you know tomorrow you've got work to do. Put the reps in today. Enjoy it. Have a great Christmas. Anthony, you have any closing points? For the, the Christmas folk before we kick this off and head towards our, our New Year's launch. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I would emphasize the point of what you said, right? When you look at your kids and you see the joy, you, you see what you're building, right? That's fuel for the fire. And a lot of times we miss that as fathers, right? We always think there's other things that are going to fix the family or make us happy, whether it's a vacation or material things. Um certain amount of Christmas lights, you know, whatever, whatever illusion you're, you're falling into. Um, just, so just to emphasize that point, right, is we want to create families that are connected, that are healthy, um, that are happy. And I think most importantly, that we enjoy the company of each other. To me, that is the foundation, right? That's what being a father is. That's what being masculine is. When, when you can build your home in such a way that the, the people who live in it they genuinely enjoy being a part of it. I mean, what a gift that is. <laughs> like, yeah. when you think about it, man, like, I mean, from the top down, bottom up, everywhere, people are thriving. And that's what it's all about. So this is Oak and Rock Fatherhood. This is about being the oak with the deep roots and rock, being a strong and hard for the family. You know, there's a lot of ways to put it. We often say shield and spear, too. You got to defend what's yours, but you've also got to fight for it. So while you're protecting your family and doing what you have to do, go out into the world. Conquer some lands. Conquer some new territory for yourself. You know, a new body that you can build, some new skill sets that you can use and employ, some new things you can learn that you can pass to the family. You know, there's so much for you to do. But if you're not looking to 2022 with optimism and hope and just almost an obsessive, like you're looking forward to that year arriving so you can just do all the things you want to do, then you're not you're not you're not getting the most. You're not giving yourself enough credit for what you can accomplish. So start thinking about that today. You know, you took the time to watch this video on Christmas. Definitely make it worth your time to be away from your family right now. So you look, you spent the time, you listened to what we had to say, now go apply it. 2022 can bring amazing things if you allow it to. If you put the reps in and you decide, hey, here's what I'm going to get. Here's the steps I'm going to take to get it. Here's the order I'm going to do it. Here's how I'm going to do it with my family, not at the expense of my family. You do all that, I mean, you're going to fucking crush it. And I look forward to seeing you crush it because that's exactly what I'll be doing as well. And Anthony, I mean, the plans that we have and the goals we have for 2022, they, they just continue to grow. Like, I thought there were, like, five things I wanted to do next year, and that's up to, like, 35. You know, that list of, like, all right, my whiteboard is getting full. Like, I wish I could spin my camera around. It's, it's I need, like, another whiteboard pretty much. <laughs> we maxed it out, man. And it's not because nothing's getting erased. It's because you erase one goal, and you've got four more set. So it's a good life to be living, and I really hope you give yourself that gift because I'm enjoying it, and I'm not going to give it up for any reason. So either join and have a good time, or next year, when we're talking about the more things that we've done in 2022 – and that Christmas, you'll be exactly where you were because you didn't put the work in. And I, I would not wish that for anybody. That's just a giant lump of coal. And look, nobody wants coal on Christmas. They want presents. So give yourself the present of being present in the moment. Y'all stay well. This has been the Christmas episode from Oak and Rock Fatherhood. Merry Christmas. Have a great one. And get prepped for the new year because it's almost go time. <laughs>